All right, thank you. So yeah, welcome back to this. You know, I've called it career catalyst. I mean, catalyst anyway. So we are going to be talking about CVs today, and what are the pitfalls when creating your CV. I've gone through some sessions on how you can create your CV now. Some people already created their CVs and I've reviewed some of them. And now I'm actually collating these together to say, these are the things I want to say on your CV. These are the things that you should not put on your CV. So that's what we're going to do today. So and this is done by Blue Sky anyway. So quickly go through that. So now we want to go through the 10 pitfalls to look at for. What are the 10 pitfalls that when you are creating your CV, what are the things that you need to look out for? So these are very, very important things that you should not miss when you are creating your CV. So, and so because this is really important, some people said they've created their CVs, but they've not actually got or they actually apply for interviews and you are not getting anything anyway, no interviews nothing so technically if you are in that situation that means your cv is not is is not right so or it's not actually doing justice to it anyway so one thing i want to do justice to that is okay what are the things that you need to look at for right the first thing that you need to look at for is like maybe you've got lot of irrelevant personal information right so some of the people that have seen their cv you put um, photographs or pictures on your cvs you shouldn't do that anyway so and um, long names right some of some people actually put their middle name and you have three names on your cv don't do that one name is enough if your name is long just shorten it anyway and that's one thing also you don't need to put a marital status so and to be honest you don't also need to put your gender right so i know some people will actually ask that or you might also have issues with okay personal information is nationality for me for people of our color right to be honest that's just the fact anyway you want to put your nationality there anyway if you uh british actually so that they know that you you've got that but uh no of course you can argue that it's discrimination but in fact it is anyway so once they see your name they think yo this person i've been going to stay in the uk blah blah so yeah but of course you want to put your contact information right you want to also put your location as well so and of your name is very very important anyways you want to put your name and you want to put your address uh, so for me i prefer address i know some people will say oh city but even if you are not putting your full address less something that you, you put in there the um uh, the recruiter can be able to know where you are in time or in relation to that particular role that you are looking for so that is the first thing that you need to look into then second one is overly long cv to be honest this one i put overly i think i should underline it anyway because this also depends on your experience i can tell you my cv is around five to six um, yeah page anyway so but I think it's also working because of my experience and anyway. So, but if you are new in the in in the role or you you, you don't have more than like maybe five or six years experience, right? So, and I'll say yeah, two to three page uh, CV will be okay anyway. But don't just have a long CV for the sake of having long CV. And having said that, uh, one of my mentees, which is now a mentor on this platform. Has got a very long CV, even I say was it eight or nine page anyway. But the, she was actually employed because of that, because all input every detail on that CV was necessary, right? And was and they were relevant anyway. So the the purpose is like, don't just create a CV for the purpose of creating CV. Let it be something that is a bit concise and also is focused on what the recruiter is looking for so that they don't lose interest while they are looking at your CV. So, and focus on relevant experience, tailor your content as well, 
and you can cut unnecessary details and yeah just keep the formatting tight and nice anyway so that's one thing that i want to to say so then another thing also yeah uh, when people list their responsibility instead of achievements uh i know people are really really looking for achievers so they are not looking for people that are working anyway so of course you want to list your roles you want to list the tasks and yeah of, don't leave your, your achievement what you've achieved on the role anyway um not only just what the job entail and so and a good example is that i increase automation by this amount of uh, percentage or I was able to manage this number of people as a scrum master or as a project manager or yeah so basically you are focused on impact rather than the duties that you are meant to do right so that's one thing that you need to look into anyway so don't just list what the role entails list what also add what you have achieved within that particular role. That's another thing that you should also ensure that you add. Poor formatting, I cannot overemphasize on this. Your layout is very, very important. I saw some of the CVs, to be honest, it was like, uh, this is basically taking a word and start typing. So please use a good template, okay? Let the layout be good. And when you are copying and pasting, ensure that you paste uh, without Mm, uh, without actually destructing the layout of that particular template anyway. So, and I know some of us might be using generic CV for some roles anyway. Like I said, it's, it's okay when you're starting anyway. So this is what I will recommend. So uh, when you start, of course, you want everyone to know there's a new BA in the market, there's a new uh, keyword in the market, there's a new data analyst or cyber security in the market, you would have a generic CV and you would, sub, you would then send it across everybody. But also there's a place for, for specific um, CVs as well and customization of your CV to meet a specific role. And you cannot be doing that for all the roles. Let's assume that you're applying for 50 roles in a day. You cannot be doing that. Well, what I said is that you out of all the roles in every day, you look at five roles that you think, yeah, this one is good. And you would then tailor your CV based on that. The rest, I think you can send them yeah, a spam of different CVs uh, or a generic one. And also, yeah, you also need to know that, yeah, when you tailor your CV, you align relevant skills and experience or qualification for that particular role anyway. So you need to demonstrate that you understand the role and organization as well. But like I said, to be honest, in some cases, you want to apply to as many roles as possible. This might not be possible for all the roles, but uh, in some instances, you take a few roles and which you actually, because that one is basically a targeted role that you know. It might be because of the fact that I just love the role or this role is close to my house, or this role they are looking for, something that I know I could do comfortably. So that one, I want to take time to be able to send my CV for, for this particular role. And another thing also, yeah, so is not including past statement, right? Or profile. I've seen not and no some some people do they actually included personal statement, but it's not sufficient anyway. You just include one or something like that. So it's really, really not, not good anyway. So statements helps the quick for you, right? So they like, oh, how to get an addict or they look at the personal statement quickly. They will, okay, I, I like this person. I want to continue reading the CV. So if you don't have a personal statement or a very strong opening, then your CV might just go into the bin anyway. So with that, you need to know that you need a personal statement. So, and also ensure that, yeah, your personal statement is short, it's not that long, but of course, three to four statement summary, highlighting your skills, your experience, and if you can, also the role that you are seeking for as well, embedded inside. So that is what I'm looking for when 
yeah, are looking or I review a CV in, in the different places anyway. So, okay. And the next thing, number six, is overloading our CV with boss word and jargon. And yeah, because some, some of us, we think, okay, we want to cheat the ATS. Uh, we put lots of buzzwords. Even some of them, we don't even know. So I would say we need to also look into that anyway. So uh, for instance, like uh, when we overuse some buzzwords, right? So and for, there's one particular word I see more often on CV, adept. In. yeah i was like yeah every cv is like that anyway so uh you are always using words like i'm dynamic i'm hard working self starter something like that so and when every time you keep on repeating those words well then it's overused right so focus on examples of your skills okay focus on, on achievements right and instead of just bombarding your cv with boss words of course boss words are very very good you can your CV will not be shortlisted if there's no buzzword anyway. So you just need to know uh, how to be intelligent in using it. And like I said before, right now, so CV creation is a craft. You need to know how to use it. You need to, you need to know how to create it anyway. So the language that you use should be clear. It should be professional and should be a language that is easily accessible to broad your broad audience. You know who you are writing your CV to. Your CV should be targeted to people that you are actually target. Now, if you, if I want to call it, I would say those are your target market. Who are you writing your CV for? So you are not writing your CV for yourself. You are writing it your, your CV for the recruiter. So you need to also know that, yeah, your CV is clear for them to understand. And also, how like the recruiter reason like the people that want to employ you don't reason like yourself right because some of us will look at oh i like this i like that or do you think the recruiter will like it right so that's one thing that you want to to know. so if a boss word is not adding value don't use it in fact every word that you add to your cv you need to be asking the question is this particular word adding value to my CV or it's not? If it's not adding value, then you don't need to use it at all, right? So you need to be asking every time you add any word I, or you remove a word and you need to be asking, is this jargon or is this boss word? Is it adding value to my, to my CV? And this is another one, another pitfall that we also do, right? So incorrect spelling, grammar, and punctuations, right? So some of us, uh, we are not consistent in our punctuations, right? So uh, when we have bullet points, we sometimes we want to say, oh, should I put um, uh, full stop at the end of the, of the bullet points? Or do I not put it, right? So you have to be consistent in your punctuation. That's one. And also you need to spell check your uh, your CV. And for some of us that are also in the technical field, it might be a, li a little difficult because some of the tools that we use are not English, right? They are not named in English. So you want to use the right spelling as well. And it also goes around to say that uh, a good example is spec flow, right? Spec flow, right? So is it S an F in capital letter or lowercase, you need, you, need to, you need to kind of go in there and write it as it's been written. So if it's capital F or lowercase F, you need to also write it, search for Specflow, go to that website, know how they wrote it. Do you get it now? Another good one is PowerPoint, all right? Is it um, capital P and also capital P for the point? Or, so it's not only just, writing you need to know that you are writing the, the real uh, name of that particular tool right and you are writing the same way and grammar is another thing also yeah so when you are writing your cv also look at the grammar as well so um so that you can actually correct them yeah
Okay, uh, this is one thing that I also want you to look at. Yeah? So neglecting keyword for ATS. This is, yeah, so when you are neglecting keywords, okay. So, and yeah, for instance, you are failing to include relevant keywords, right? That match the job descriptions. So, and when you are applying for a job, right? Try as much as possible to look at the keywords in that particular job description so and so that you can be able to kind of put that on your CV or look into yeah how you can actually match it. So um, um many UK companies are using ATS nowadays to fit a CV. So they look at it. So if your CV lack a particular term they are looking for, to be honest, it won't just reach the recruiter. And that means that particular CV will not be seen by a woman being before he gets there the uh, ats will have just removed it and maybe you may have seen a situation like this when you apply for a role right i just you just apply right now five minutes after that that part even maybe immediately or even five minutes like you saw another email coming through to your inbox to say unfortunately you are not successful you cannot imagine that, <laughs> wow, I've just applied to this role. You didn't even let me finish before you sent a uh, rejection letter, actually. Who actually looked at this particular CV? So technically, your CV might be strong and also you might done sort of thing, but it doesn't actually meet the keywords or the terms that they've actually set out right in the ATS. So you need to look into that. So read the job descriptions and for for me, I will tell you. So for some of the roles, you might not need to read job descriptions if you are, if you want to apply what I call a dube, right? So like I said, apply to fifty or hundred jobs in a day. So those one you just need to know. But of course, you want you also know that this might also come with rejections. But having said that, I like I told you, you need to look at like five jobs in a day that you think this is for me. Take your time on those ones and apply directly, right? Most ones you want to ensure that the relevant skills or qualifications are in in your CV, right? And also you need to use that times throughout your your CV as well. Anyway, so this is another thing I want you to look into, right? Leaving gaps unexplained, right? So when you leave gap unexplained, so you actually raise a red flag, right? for most employers in, in the UK. So, and you lead, you are also leading them to assume that you aren't working or what is happening and everything. If you're in school, let them know, right, that you are in school because your education can stay that anyway. And even in the job description, you can, in the job profile, we can actually say, oh, uh, from so, 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 so time, education with blah, blah, blah. So that, yeah, so that you, they know that you, you, are not working and, and you're able to explain because sometimes you might take some gap you, know, you might have some gap because you are traveling or personal reasons or even for training as well or for school so sometimes you just you just honest and say okay this is what i was doing at that particular time otherwise they would then start to kind of uh try to assume what you were doing at that particular time. And to be honest, this might not even make you to be in front of the recruiter, right? If you are not able to kind of put that in there. So for instance, if you, let's say for a woman right now, say, okay, I'm on maternity leave at this particular time. Put it there that, okay, from this time and this time, I was on maternity leave and that's it. So, and that's one thing that you want to, to do. So, yeah, however, as I was saying, if you do have any questions, so please, yeah, put it on the uh, the chat. As uh, There's a question coming through right now. I have a few gap when I had my children and yeah, and they were, yeah. So I think those things you can, you can actually in that you take you took a career break right because yeah of your children and everything and now you are coming back yeah, anyway so that that also is explainable even right now in the uk yeah some we know that some people can take career break for them to sort their kids and everything so because we know that when you are coming back you are coming back strong and every and now the kids are older and everything yeah so that's another thing you want to kind of explain anyway so you know, within that 
And yeah, so another thing that you, you should be aware of is incomplete contact information. In fact, uh, I would say, I think this kind of has happened to me, right? And also there's someone I also mentor as well. So this person, not only in, yeah, incorrect contact details, was like, oh, I know, I know why I did not get any, uh, any calls because the telephone number the person put on the CV were actually short one digit, right? So I would say that maybe just ask someone to kind of review your CV for you, right? Even at, as detailed as let them call the number that you put on your CV. Now, that even to your telephone number is very, very important anyway, so that you know that that telephone number works, right? Someone should call it, right? Because for you, you can think the telephone is working because in these days that most of us were on WhatsApp, your telephone number might be working on WhatsApp. People are calling your WhatsApp, but you don't know that it's done, it doesn't work direct anyway. So you need to know that a, a CV is useless if a, an employer cannot cannot reach you. Right? So they need to be able to reach you, to contact you. Yeah. Double check this, right? Your email address, double check is fine. And another thing about email address, right so don't put a very long email address right if your email address is more than 10 characters yeah please look into it anyway right so because with that it's becoming difficult right for people to type it anyway so and they might get you wrong yeah so and also if you can yeah make sure your um, email is a bit professional right not my my dirty dog at yahoo.com or something like that so some of us we have that email but to be honest uh like i said if you already kind of experience in the market even if you put a wrong if you put not wrong now if you put an email that's not professional people will stay contact you they will still call you because your work would not speak for you but as an entry as someone that is going to come in in, fresh into the field you don't want anything to stand as a barrier for you so you want to kind of look into into this one so now another thing is ats what is ats uh, i've mentioned this several times uh when they say ats ats what exactly is this so application tracking system so and um, this uh tools or softwares that recruiter can use for them to be able to streamline the application process, right? So what they do is like they've got this application that is kind of automated now, right? So that uh, the recruiter are not wasting their time free train through a lot of applications. So the software is now the one that is helping them to filter uh, based on specific uh, criteria, right? So. And that's why I've explained before that, yeah. So once you want to, when you apply, you create your CV, you should know that it meets what the recruiter is looking for, right? So, and now let's look into how this ATS works, right? How does it work? This is another thing that I want to talk about. So first, ATS will collect and store your application, right? So. And this application could be via a job board like a uh, job site or um, maybe LinkedIn or read. They will, they will collect that also, or um, even from the company website anyway. So it's been plugged in through an API and everything, or even sometimes it's sent as an email to the um, ATS. So, and then it stores it into a centralized database where, where recruiter can easily assess and manage them anyway. So that's the first thing that is done. Then after that, there is passing of your CV, right? So this is where the ATS scans and then break the content of your CV down, right? So, and then you extract the buzzword or maybe you call it keywords as well, right? Uh, like contact information, your experience, your skills, and everything. So, and then you now store it in a format that is structured, right? So, and technically, what it's doing is like it takes your CV, uh, tear it apart, then translate it in a language that you can be able to kind of work with it anyway. 
Then after that, it then filters the right candidate, right? And for you, this is where you want to be. You want to be the part of people that ATS will feature their candidate on um, their CV and get employed. So, and once he's doing that, he's looking for some keywords, he's looking for the right experience, the right skills, he's also some looking for location. That is why uh, for people that are saying that, don't put your location or your CV, so you might, there's, there's pro and con in 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 the in this one anyway because if you don't put your CV, uh, if you don't put your location on your CV, then maybe it's broad. But sometimes the ATS also use the location as well to shortlist the the CV. So if there's no location completely, so you might not get anything. But if there's location, you might also be shortlisted out or in anyway. If your location is far, is far, so you might not be shortlisted. But it's also possible that they are looking for five mm, five mile radius or something like that. So that's another thing. So you just need to look at what works, what works for you anyway. So in terms of that, so because you have tons, uh, recruiters have tons of emails, right, or uh, job applications and they want to eliminate those that do not meet the basic qualification before they can even check those applications. So, and you want to ensure that at least someone, a person is reviewing your CV, not like a machine is kind of putting in the bin. So, and you want to be able to do that. So then another thing that happens after that is your CVs also can be ranked and the score is allocated anyway. So you assign a score based on how the CV matches the job description. So one thing that you need to look you need to look into is like when you are writing your CV and you there's some buzzword or let's say skills or tools and you put them in a session, right? And they, they look at it, they, they put your scores there. But if this tool or this case is embedded in your job description within your CV, right, then it actually attracts more mark or you got. So then your CV would also be in the IR ranked anyway. So you need to also look into that. So, and in some cases, you can have CV being used throughout the uh, life cycle of the, of the recruitment anyway. So, okay. So now let's go through how ATS will pass your CV. I, I spoke about passing and filtering your CV anyway. So yeah, so for ATS, how does it actually pass your CV? Uh, so, so that, yeah, that your CV is in front of the recruiter and they are able to say, okay, yeah, come in or something like that. So uh, one thing that it does, like I said, contact information is one. So it knows, that, okay, I will really put your contact information in the right place, your telephone number, your email, even locations as well. So, and your work experience is another thing. So your job title is important. It has to be related to what you're looking for, the company that you work for, the date of employment and the responsibility. And if I'm also add even, yeah, the achievements as well uh, within the responsibility, that also is is what uh they are what you want to put into your cv then the skills and your education right so the relevant skills that are required and also compared within the job descriptions as well as the degree that you end on uh, certifications and yeah so this is another thing yeah i put the date of certifications yeah so <laughs> So this is funny. So so, and it's 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 something that you should know as well. So, um, some of us that uh, we got a lot of experience. Let me put that in there anyway. So even though UK will say that they don't discriminate on age, but to be honest, there's still discrimination anyway. So, uh, you need to be wise as serpent. They say, isn't it? So, and your date of education can give it can give your age away so i would say a word is wise for the a word is enough for for the wise anyway so if you graduated a long time ago and maybe leaving the you know, dates can be a wise thing right 
Let me just say that quietly. Yeah. And also, if you are looking for entry level, right, also look into the fact that your experience does not date back into many, many years. Right. <laughs> I did an interview and the person was asking me, I think you might be older than I am. <laughs> I said, who oh, actually give that away? <laughs> so uh, it was, was like, mm, I just have that feeling. And I said, okay, of course, sometimes it will happen because of the experience I've gathered over years anyway. So, but of course, the person just asks anyway. So, but even though it was a genuine uh, request, but I, I, I get it anyway. So you need to also look into that anyway. So, okay, all right. Now, what are the common pitfall and how you can avoid them? So this is where I'm going to stop anyway. So for today, so for eight years now, so like this maybe is okay to call it the almighty eight years. How can you beat it? <laughs> what are the things that you shouldn't do? What are the things that you should do? Right. First, one, like I've mentioned before, poor formatting. So if you have a complicated layout and also you have images non-standard fonts or your cv is all over the place right so you put I, I, even some people say okay tables table is okay but yeah know that sometimes some ats may not be able to read tables right so that's one thing so maybe you should do it in um, tabular forms Graphic is a no-no, right? So that's one. Images is a no-no as well. So because, yeah, they won't be able to read it. But however, I don't know, on my CV, I have image of the logo or the certification that I've used anyway. But yeah, but except from that, of course, I, I don't expect you to put image of yourself or something like that. So yeah, but to be honest, if... They are not, if the image is relevant, you can put it there like image of certification or logo. But even if the ATS is going to ignore it, that's fine. As long as you present it in a very good place anyway, that's fine. So, and what you need to do solution to poor formatting is to use a standard format, okay? So the one that I test based, okay? And also I would say that use some fonts the widely accepted area calibre times in new roman and yeah those ones and then avoid any on design that can be confusing to the system right so when you are i think the best thing is for you to template that is standard right then you stick with that template and i know some people attached and when I say I want to review their CV, they attached PDF. Please don't do don't send PDF. To be honest, some ATS cannot uh, undo PDF, right? So I said before a few weeks ago, you cannot get it wrong with Word format, Microsoft Word. So I would say that you should use that anyway. So uh, unless it's specifically requested that you send a PDF. Don't don't use PDF, okay? So and um, yeah, what you can't get you wrong with what anyway. So okay, and um, yes, yeah, some and also lack of keyword is another thing like you should look at for. So ensure that you tailor your CV to meet the requirements and also the application that you're applying for. So and for you need to do that to ensure that yeah you identify the critical skills and the qualification that you want to address within that particular role, right? So that is, yeah, these are some of the pitfall that you want to kind of ignore, okay? So another thing that you want to also look into is incorrect section heading, right? I've seen some people, they don't even have uh, section headings in their CVs, uh, what am I talking about? Like section for work experience, no section for education, or you, instead of saying education, you said uh, qualification, right? So yeah, 
because one way that that maybe in this era of AI, the ATS might get wired, but I would say let's just take it, uh, let's just stay with traditional editing like, yeah, work experience, skills, education, certificate in different, yeah. So those are the things that you want to ensure that you put into, into your CV anyway. So yeah, and also, yeah. So yes, uh, like I said, don't write something like professional path, my journey, yeah, to be honest, that is not standard uh, way of writing your CV. So, and another thing is using Editors or footer. I've seen that in one of the in some of the CV I reviewed as well. So yeah, when you have footers or you have headers, yeah, this is basically non ATS friendly, right? So anything that you put into the footer or the header will be basically ignored, right? And if you if you happen to be important information like your contact details or that you put in there. Technically, it's not going to see it. It's going to see it anyway. So yeah, that you need to ensure that you put the right information where they need to be and don't use, yeah. So ensure that you don't use footer or header. So, and this is where I'm going to stop right now. I've gone through yeah, those pitfalls. So why? creating your CV, what you should do, what you should not do. And I've also gone through ATS, right? What are the things that you should look at for when you are submitting your CV so that your CV is shortlisted by an ATS uh, application. So, okay. And uh, if we do have any questions, I would, I'm happy to kind of take them anyway.